Hi, and welcome to the Faith Family Church Podcast. For more information about our church and who we are, visit our website, ffcackward.com. Enjoy the message, and thank you so much again for listening. said we were singing about it this morning the river of life flowing out of me you got a river of life flowing out of you this morning wherever that river flows it's just bring forth life amen so that's a breakthrough experience constantly we're going to talk about that book of samuel the second samuel that's an interesting book um samuel uh you know in his efforts to uh do the will of God had many hard times as a prophet he would minister to Saul and he'd minister to David and other kings and he'd be very instrumental in the anointing of the kings and and his heart was broken over Saul you'll find so many times where he cried vigorously over Saul but he had to move on and, and anoint a new guy named David and of course then David would come on the scene after Saul was put to death. Um, there's there's a lot of conflict there over the death of Saul. We know that Saul fell on his own sword or spear, but he didn't die immediately. And there was a case where he invited a young man to kill him to put him out of his misery. And then, of course, when that young man did, he thought he was doing the will of the king. And then, of course, King David had him put to death because he touched God's anointed. Now, it's it's kind of a hard, fine line, and I'm thankful that I was born in the New Testament period. Amen? I'm thankful that I have the privilege to live in New Covenant time where the, the Old Covenant and the law wasn't uh, of judgment uh, for our sins wasn't imputed to us because I would have never made it this far. Amen? I'm thankful for grace and mercy. But because we have grace and mercy, I believe our responsibility is even all the greater than theirs of the Old Testament because we have the blood of Christ. Amen? And so when we talk today about breakthrough and we look at what happened in the life of David, you've got to remember this is an Old Testament experience that's symbolic. It's a shadow of the New Testament experience. You and I should be walking in the Spirit. Amen? And so let's read, if we could this morning, uh, New King James Version. David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. And so David went to Bel Perizim, and David defeated them there. And he said, The Lord has broke through, listen to this, the Lord has broke through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. Therefore I will call the name of this place Bel Perizim. Bel Perizim simply means breakthrough, or it means to a burst of water. I, I was thinking about a burst of water. I remember as a kid, we used to have water balloon fights. I remember water balloon fights. In fact, as an adult, we've had water balloon fights. Amen. I like water balloon fights. But I never like to be the recipient of it. I like to be the giver of it, but I don't like to be the recipient. I remember one time I turned just in time to catch a water balloon in the forehead, and it burst for it. <laughs> and I remember the burst of water kind of reminded me of what must have happened that day. It was like a a burst of energy, a, a, a just a, I mean, a breaking. It was an obviously breaking forth through the line of the enemy, and destruction just began to fall on every side of that breakthrough. I mean, as those men broke through the line, it was like the, it was like a bowling pin. Just the enemy was falling before the men of God, and and these men went forth and and obviously won the battle. But I want to emphasize something to you today, and we're going to start this morning, but. In the emphasis of what we're talking about and looking at, you must want breakthrough. You must want breakthrough. I don't know what's happening in your life today, and you might be struggling in your business, you might be struggling in your personal life, your marriage, the raising of your kids, there's things that you don't understand. Let me tell you something. Yeah, all of us need times of breakthrough, and, and there's nothing, man, there has been some significant times in my life where I've had breakthrough that I needed that. I needed a specific thing from God. And in fact, the other night I was I was laying in bed and 
God, you know, speaks to me in very unique ways, just like he does to everyone. He ministers to you on your own level. And, I, and all of a sudden, I woke up out of my sleep, and I had, it was about, and the funny thing was, it was 4.30 in the morning, but I know the number came to my head first. It was, the Bible, uh, uh, it was the Spirit of the Lord just woke me up saying, Acts 4.30. Acts 4.30, and I kept saying, Acts 4.30, and I looked at the clock, and it was 4.30 in the morning, and I thought, you know, this is kind of odd, and so I couldn't resist. I had to get up, and I, I want to read to you this morning. In fact, just go with me to the book of Acts, kind of a little commercial break, but it's amazing, and I believe it's, it's, it's directly resulted to the ministry that I'm tied to right now, and, and it has nothing to do with me or you other than we're a willing vessel, Okay. But I woke up with this in mind, in, or, you know, 4.30 in mind, and, and then I had to go back and read a couple verses. But it says, by stretching out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. I thought to myself, why in the world, God, would you wake me up with that on my spirit? And all I, could, all I could, as I began to study this chapter and realize what had happened, Peter and John had just uh, testified, or they were in the courts testifying about how this man was healed. And it was by the hand and the name of Jesus that this man was healed. And they, he stood before them. They couldn't refute the fact that this man that was once lame, that gate beautiful, is now made whole. But it was by the laying on of hands. Peter and John said, Peter said, take me by the hand. And he took the man by the hand. He said, stand up. And the man stood up in the name of Jesus. And Jesus, or Peter made it very clear. It's in the name of Jesus. And I want to say to you this morning, I don't feel like it was by accident pastor was woke up. I feel like divinely appointed of God, not because I'm somebody special, but because I want to believe, and this is what about breakthrough. You must want breakthrough. You must want to see God use you. You must want to see God move in your life. We look at this, the first thought I want to give you under this is that you can't just sit still and complain. You ever been around somebody that just whines and complains about why God's not doing this, and why God's not doing this? And You know, David never was found complaining. David inquired of the Lord. David went to the Lord. He knew that his strength was in the Lord. The difference between David and Saul is Saul lost sight of that. Saul began to compromise in his life. He made provisions, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but the difference between David and Saul was the simple that Saul would compromise, and, and he would stop going to God. He would, he would start going to other sources. You can't stop. In, in the life of, that you've been living, you may have been 30, 40 years in Christ now. Don't stop now. Don't stop now. Now the more, all the more. Get involved in knowing God in a very intimate way. You can't just sit still. I want to take you, if you go to the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter, verse 28, you'll read the story of a man that was at the pool of Bethesda, or Bethsaida. And uh, there at that pool, he was there for 38 years. Man, I, I, I just meditate on that for a moment. 38 years. He went to that pool, or he was laid beside the pool. Now, I don't know. I've, I've wondered this. Uh, where Was the man housed there all week long? Did he stay, stay both day and night? I don't know. And did he get fed there? And I, You know, I wondered, how did he get there? If he didn't have the ability to get himself in the pool, then how did he get there? And who took care of him? Who was feeding him? Who was providing for him? Uh, there, there's some things here in this story that just don't seem to add up. If you had the ability to find somebody to bring you to the pool, then you must have the ability to have somebody put you in the water. But it was easier to complain and whine and throw a fit about the fact that I just don't have anybody to wait on me. I don't have any ability, so I want to just sit here and whine and be still. You know, look, at sometimes we need to make change. Sometimes we need to step out and, and make an effort. What, the next thought this morning, you must make an effort to do something different. If you're, if you're not breaking through to God and you're not having the victories that you need in, in Christ, let me tell you something. God is not powerless to work the miracle in your life. God has all power, all authority to do the miracle within your life. Whether it be a miracle of, of bringing an actual little miracle to provide for you or make a way for you, whatever the need is, or if he can just give you the knowledge as to how to work your way through the source and the problem to get to the victory one way or the other 
Breakthrough is nothing more, and I, I wrote the definition of breakthrough, and I just want you to, you can look it up in the dictionary. The word breakthrough means a sudden, dramatic, important discovery or development of knowledge. I get knowledge, okay, all of a sudden I get a revelation. You know, it can be through a discovery of just a, a miracle of God that God said, you know, by his stripes we are healed, so be healed, and all of a sudden you get up healed and delivered. Or sometimes you can find a doctor to help you through your circumstance, whatever the case be. But the bottom line is knowledge, the dramatic, it's, a, it's, a, it's an impacting like it's a burst of water, a blast of revelation come to my soul. Have you ever had a moment like that? You ever had a moment like that? Some of you guys that are mechanics, you ever had them, David or David Allen? You probably at times stepped back from some cars and said, Lord Jesus, if you don't lead me on this one, I'm never going to figure this baby out. And all of a sudden, you get a burst of knowledge, a burst of excitement. All of a sudden, hey, I got it figured out. I know exactly. And bang, it's exactly what God revealed to you. You know, that's the way God wants to work in your life. He wants to talk to you continuously. But you, you, you can't just keep doing the same thing. Sometimes you got to make change. You got to do something different. What is that something different? Let me tell you that something different is turning to God. Stop turning to self. Stop turning. You know, I, I hear it often, <laughs> and we've been guilty as leadership at times within churches. Instead of seeking God, we'll go seek some other minister that's been there. And there's, there's nothing wrong with the counsel. There's wisdom in the counsel of many, okay? I understand that. But when, when it's all said and done, you better get the mind of God on it. You better have the mind of God on it. You can't just depend on the influence of some other minister or some other entity going to give you some insight because their insights are all probably very good and they work for them in that place and in that time. But the bottom line is it might not work here. It might not be right here. It might be something totally opposite of what God wants at this moment in your life. And if you don't know what God wants, then what are you going to do? You're going to run headlong into problem after problem after problem. Notice David didn't turn to the left or to the right. He inquired of the Lord and he waited to hear from the Lord. Now, I don't know. I was talking to David this morning, our, our pastor David on the way to church this morning. How long was it that it took God to answer David? I, I find it very interesting. It's almost like the conversation Pastor David and I were having in the car this morning. I would ask a question and he would give an answer almost immediately. You know, or he would say a phrase to me and I would respond. It was like this conversation of just an immediate conversation. And it almost feels like when you read the story that David is having that immediate conversation with God. Now, how long it took David to get into the presence of God and how long it took him and how he got there, I don't know. But the man was hearing from God. The man was hearing a direct order from God that, yeah, go up because I'm going to provide a way for you and I'll surely, without doubt, put them in the care of you. They're going to be subject to you, David, so get up there and do it. Now, now notice there's going to be all times, if you read on in this story, you're going to find where he has to go again and fight again. And David inquires and, say, and said, God says this time, hey, don't face them head on. I want you to go round back and I want you to hide under the mulberry trees. And you wait until you hear the rustling of the mighty winds coming through the top of those trees before you step out. Now, let me ask you something. If he wouldn't have done that, would have David had success? No. He would have not had success. He had to be in tune with what God was saying. So how do I get in tune with God? Do something different. One, begin to seek and knock. Inquire of God. Find a place of prayer. Get a prayer closet. I love the prayer. What's that movie out about the lady that had the prayer room? war room, thank you. She had a little closet in her house, and, and I love the end of it. When she was gone and she left that house, some other older gentlemen come in, and, and the only reason why he really wanted that house is because he found that war room. He found that prayer closet. He found that place, and there was an anointing that he sensed there. And I'm telling you, folks, why? Because when you inquire of the Lord, the Lord will never lead you astray. And he'll always give you even in times of unexpected, I don't know that David really knew what would happen when he got down there. He just knew that the Philistines were under his cover and he was going to take control of them. Now, I don't know if he really expected the burst of energy and, and the, the blowout that he had. It's, you, know, you know, it could have been like the game a couple weeks ago, Alabama and Georgia. 
bouncing back and forth and nobody knew until that last few seconds and then it was like, oh no, I can't believe, I can't believe and yeah, look at David over here, he's an Alabama, but we'll, hey, we'll crucify him after service, you traitor, you Alabama boy, no, I'm just teasing with you. The whole point is, folks, you just never know. I don't know that they knew the outcome. They had high expectations, but nobody really knew the outcome of that game, okay? And just like David, when he stepped down into that battle, he knew this. Now, he, it's one thing Georgia or Alabama didn't know. He knew he was winning because he was on God's side, and God was on his side. And that's the difference between our relationship with God and, 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 you know, we can find ourselves like the man uh, that was at the pool of Bethesda that day and why he was there 38 years, I have no idea. But you'll find this in the process of that. He says, one, in, in, and I want you to go with me to another passage of Scripture this morning. Uh, the 11th chapter of, of, did I already say this, 11th chapter of Matthew? It talks about his yoke is easy, his burden is light. I probably gave you the wrong chapter one. It was John fifth chapter that you'll find the sick man at the pool of Bethsaida or Bethany. But anyways, here in, in scripture, in Matthew 11 chapter, verse 28 through 30, you'll find that my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And, and, and something about being yoked with God, when you're seeking God and trying to solve problems in your life, and, and this is the next point this morning, seek for God the answer. Seek from God the answer this morning. You, you, you got to seek him. You got to you got to seek him until it comes. And and the, and, and it's kind of interesting when we look at the seek seek until you find or hear from God. Seek until you find or hear from God. I look at that passage of scripture in Matthew eleven chapter verse twenty eight through through thirty. It invites you with three thoughts: one, to rest, to serve, and to learn. When you think about the resting, you're resting from all your guilt of sin and and death and judgment. You're resting in the anointing of God that God is working on your behalf. He's called you to serve. And it's interesting that I'm not a farmer, but I've heard through the years my, my wife's granddaddy was a, a farmer in Indiana. And uh, when he was a young man, he used to try out different animals, horses and stuff they used to plow the field. He grew up in a day when they didn't have tractors. When he first started as a kid, they were plowing the field with the old drag behind plow and, and yak, uh, a, oak of, a yoke of horses together. And remember, he had this one strong young horse, but he was kind of a wild thing. And what he would do is, Grandpa told me, he'd always yoke them together with the trained true one. And he would put them with the older horse. Why? Because the older horse needed the strength of the younger horse to pull, but the older horse knew the way. The older horse knew the way. And when you think about our relationship with God, God says, I want to yoke you with me. And, and if I yoke you together, you can't go any place that I don't go. Hear this. This is so beautiful, man. If you want to have a real breakthrough, get yoked together with God. Yoke yourself together with God and just let him lead you. He knows the way. He knows everything about where you're going. He knows every bump in the road. He knows it before it's coming. See, that old horse knows every turn of that field. He's been over that field a thousand and one times. He can do it blindfold. And the beauty is if you're yoked together with him, you're never going to trip nor stumble. You're going to be exactly, and that's the confidence we can have. And, and if we learn God, when you, you see that part there where it says, learn of me. Learn of me. It simply means to be taught of God. The Apostle Paul in the ninth chapter, the Bible says the book of Acts, the ninth chapter, that Paul was taught of the Holy Spirit. Nobody, can you imagine if he would have been taught of the disciples? Could you imagine if he only heard from Peter, James, and John? They were good and they knew what they were doing, but I wonder if they would ever got to the Gentile world if it would have been up to Peter, James, and John. Because Peter, James, and John had trouble going outside of the Jewish nationality. They wanted to only go to Israel. And it wasn't until God gave a vision and a dream and began to transform his thinking, Peter was able to see something different, okay? But Paul was birthed to go already to that, that generation of what we knew were uh, nothing more than uh, infidels. They were, they, were, they were not worthy of the gospel. And yet God went and took Paul to the Gentile world because why? He was taught of the Holy Spirit. 
And, and that's why Paul was able to bring more revelation to you and I today because it wasn't that he was yoked just to Peter, James, and John, but he found himself yoked to the one that he was persecuting. Paul, why are you persecuting me? Come on up here with me. I'm going to yoke you with me by the power of my spirit. I'm going to yoke you together with me. I'm going to lead you, man. You're going to go places that you might not want to go in the physical. But that's all right. You're going to be shipwrecked. You're going to be beaten. You're going to be stoned. But ultimately, I'm going to take you to Rome. And you're going to be my witness. And all the way, Paul does all these things. Why? Because he was yoked to Christ. He learned of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, folks, if we learn God like that, doesn't mean you won't be stoned. It don't mean you won't be persecuted. It don't mean that you won't suffer at times loss of this world in regards to the things that we think we really need when all in honesty we don't need those things we just want those things but you'll always have what you need and God will take care of you amen praise the Lord he'll tell he'll take you through it so seek until you find or hear from God what you find in here and this is so important must line up with his work must line up with his work have you ever had dreams and visions? Uh, let, let's just go to dreams. Anybody in here ever dream? Okay. You ever wake up wondering, why did I have that dream and what was it about? Maybe some of you are still thinking about that dream for 20 years ago. Trying to figure out, why in the world did I see that in my, in my dreams? What was that all about? Was God trying to speak? Let me say something. Here's an easy solution to solving some of the problem there. Now, some of it might be vague, and the dream might be so vague that you can't correlate it to God's Word. But I'm telling you, put a test to God's Word. Take that dream, whatever you saw in your thinking that, that evening or the, the, during the day or wherever you were sleeping, and you saw that dream, always apply the Word of God to it. If it doesn't line up with God's Word, then you need to take and put that imagination out of your head. I'm telling you, there are things that are going to exalt because you, you're saying to me, well, the devil can't really play in my dreams. Maybe, maybe he can. I'm telling you, the reason why I believe that he might could is because what you open yourself up before you go to bed will have a direct result on your ability to dream from God or not. And let me just say this to you. If you allow yourself to run with your eyes full of the world and full of the things of this life and begin to view things that are not of God, you're liable to find your dreams being interrupted by the enemy of your soul. Because you've opened yourself up. The windows of your eyes are the windows of your soul this morning. And what you see and what you put into it will begin to have an effect on what's happening in your spirit. And it works on you all night long if you're not careful. That's why. Put to yourself good things. When you go to bed at night, fill your heart with God's word before you go to bed. Okay? Fill your heart. Fill your house with God's word continuously. Let the, let's let the radio play God's praises all day long. Let worship go. Let the word of God be in spoke all day long in your house. So when you come in, the word of God begins to build your spirit the moment you come in. You, get the country western off of your radio in your car and start listening to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? You spend too many hours in the car that could be effectively given to you and God as a relationship builder, but you're going to listen to your country western. I understand. You know, some love song about, most of it's about somebody's cheating heart, you know. Come on, what do you need all that junk for? And then we wonder why we're not getting breakthroughs. You're getting breakthroughs of the, of the third kind or the whatever you want to call it, of the foreign kind, but they're not of God. It must line up with God's word. Be patient and willing to wait. That, that's not an easy one for most of us, but it is one that's definitely needed. Because sometimes it's not that God has trouble getting the answer to us. It's just we have trouble hearing it. We have trouble hearing it. I, you know, <laughs> I still get that with my wife. Ah, bless God. She says I have selective hearing. I, I, and I do. I know I do have my, my hearing has been affected a little bit by the kind of business I've done. Loud tractors and noise all around me has affected my ears some. But you'd be surprised. I can hear better than you think. And... and and I have to, I, I got to be careful now because my wife's learned that through the years. <laughs> she said, you just have selective hearing, Donald. Well, you know, God forbid that we have selective hearing from God. I don't want selective hearing with him. 
I want to hear him clear and loud. I, I, I still go back to the story of David. Could you imagine what it would have been like for him if he didn't hear from God? He, you know, because he, he wasn't king of Israel yet. He was just king of Judah right now. He still, even though um, Saul was dead and gone. In fact, he, he, they brought him the crown of Saul. But that didn't make David king. And even though Samuel anointed him years earlier, it was only by anointing that he was king. But he still had to possess that kingship. He still had to go out. There was a lot of people wanting to kill him. A lot of people that were still subject and honoring Saul. In the camp of Israel, if you read these next several chapters here, you'll see where Israel is battling back and forth. And they're arguing and they're calling out to one another, why are we killing each other? We're Israel. We're of the camp of God. Why are we still killing each other? Because some were true to Saul and some were trying to learn. And then there were other kings involved as well. I mean, this was a, a, a terrible time of turmoil within Israel. There, you talk about civil war, man. They had enough war from the outside sources like the Philistines and many others, and they were killing each other. Why? Because the church was killing each other. Why? Because we were of different opinions. Look, there's only one opinion that really matters. That's the Word of God. And so, please... Get a hold of God's word for your, your life, your relationship with your wife and your children and your family and, and your husband and so forth. Come on, church. It's important to understand. We must, what? Follow his direction. Follow his direction. Act upon what God has given you. Act upon. David didn't have insight but for that one battle, and he got it one at a time. He got it one at a time. And when he did miss, you know, he got so excited about the covenant coming, or the, the Ark of the Covenant coming home, so he threw it on a cart. And, and, I, and I've often wondered, and David brought some insight to me today, it might have been because he saw the Philistines take it like that. I don't know. Or maybe he didn't have the full revelation that the priest needed to carry it. I don't know, and he didn't know. that He just knew that he wanted God's anointing back in the house. He wanted that Ark of the Covenant home in Israel with him. And so he, out of haste, goes and throws on a cart, and we see Uzzah gets killed because of it. And then David had the audacity at first be a little bit upset with God. When, David, why are you upset with me? You're not following the rules. You're not paying attention to what I've governed you to do. You're not doing it my way. You're just doing it your way because you want the blessing for you and the people. For you. It's all about you. It's not about me. And David, until you make it about me, then everything will be all right. So here, you need to understand, church, this faith family church is not about you. It's about getting involved in knowing who you are in the church and building his church, not yours. Not mine. It's not Pastor Cycling, but his church. You hear it often, you go to district councils, how's your church doing? Oh, you mean God's church? It really is God's church. Thank God I have the privilege of pastoring this church and thank God I have the privilege of being a part of this family. But the bottom line is, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about his will, his church, growing his church, doing kingdom business. It's his way. Act upon what he's given. Look, at God has given all kinds of revelation. Is anybody in here not know that God wants you to lead people to Christ? You got something to work with right there. That's, if, if nothing else, you know that God has called you to give a witness. Now, please hear my heart. It's really simple. We're going to go out on the street this next week. It's really simple. Just introduce yourself. Isn't it a beautiful day today? You know, you can do it like that. You can just walk up to anybody and say, wow, I noticed you. I love that blouse you're wearing. It's as simple as breaking the ice by just getting in conversation. And, and then you can simply hand them a little invite. If you're nervous and don't know how to say it, look at I'm part of Faith Family Church, and we just want to invite you to church. And along with it, we'll give them a, maybe if, if you're one of those that are really nervous, we'll give you the windy cards, okay? I'm going, to get, I'm going to get all these free, how many like Frosties, little chocolate Frosties, okay? I'm going to get those little Frosty things that you can give out to give them a gift. You're not just giving them an invite. And you're not inviting them just to know Jesus Christ the Lord, which is the greatest invite you could give them. But if nothing else, hey, can I bless you today? I just want to, give, you like Frosties, don't you? I'm going to give you a free year supply of Frosties. Every day you can go get a Frosty for free at Wendy's. Just drive through, show me a little card, and all year long you'll get a free Frosty. Now, how hard is that? And they say, well, man, that's really gracious of you. And then you can talk to them about the Lord. It's easy. You can find all kinds of ways. So 
when we do about this, what are we doing this for? Why? Because we have something to act upon. Follow his directions exactly. There's only one way to give him Jesus. Or, or one way to get him to heaven, that's give him Jesus. Okay? Don't get involved in, in, in talking about all these other religions. You can. But the bottom line is you're still going to have to help them understand there's only one way to the Father. See, we, we need to act upon his way. We can't lead them any other way. And if, and if they don't want to receive it, that's fine. Love them. Don't, don't, don't turn and say, die and go to hell. Who cares? No. It worked. It worked for somebody. But God forbid that's the way we have to present it. But if the Holy Spirit tells you to do it, then maybe you need to do it because it might be all what that man needs to get him into heaven. Final thought this morning under there is trust in him and his promised results. David was not only told, go do it, but he said, most assuredly, without doubt, David, I'm going to give him into your hands. And think about the word of God. Most assuredly, someday, when you pass from this life to the next, you will make heaven your home. You have an eternal place with God. Forever and always, I will be in the presence of the Lord. And I want to do my best to bring as many. But it's not just about that. It's about loving him, not for the things he's going to do for us and has done for us, but love him just because he's God and he deserves it. Amen? He's delivered and set you free. Trust, at, or trust him at his promised results. David, you are going to win this battle. We go on further here. Trust him as it promised results in the fact that he has given you a word, rest in it. I, again, I, I, I look at this word. Uh, it, it, I, I said this a couple Wednesday nights ago. You have a tremendous tool. But if you never read it and never use it, it's absolutely worthless. And I've wondered sometimes, and you know, I used to go into houses and have to renovate them. And I found many a Bible sitting up on a shelf or in the back of a closet full of dust. Never been used. Brand new Bibles. Never been opened. Never been written in. Never, never once you could tell it was so crisp. The only thing that made it old looking was all the dust on top of it. And I thought to myself, the reason why these poor folks ended up being thrown out of their house and being without is because they never read that. Nobody ever told them how to read it. Nobody ever showed them how to read it. Nobody ever showed them to hide this word in their heart that they wouldn't be in a mess in life. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to tell you something. The majority of the people today, especially in the United States of America, most of them, there's been a few that have been unfairly treated and, and their results are because of somebody else. Their circumstances are truly because of somebody else. But if you get truthful with yourself, and you need to be because you'll never get out of it, you'll never have the breakthrough you need until you become truthful. Most of the time we get in the mess we're in is because of us. Because of me. The poor choices I've made. Okay? Rest in his word. He has given you a vision and a sign. So trust them. David, wait until you see the leaves of the top of those trees begin to blow. I've given you a sign, David. This is what you need to wait on. Wait until you feel the anointing. You sense the anointing of God blowing through the top of those trees, son. And then you blow the charge and go out there and fight the battle because you're going to win. Come on, that's the promise that God made. And God did that of old to us. Did he not say that because he overcame? I, I hear this all the time. You know, when I'm fighting things in my life, I, I got to stop and pull myself together and realize, wait a minute, Jesus overcome this. So by faith in the name of Jesus, I'm an overcomer to I'll not let this thing with me. I'll find a way through. Trust the Bible says here, trust him and his promise. And the last thought this morning is never expect anything less than the promised result. I can't imagine that day that David wrote out and God said to him that doubtless, David, I'm going to give the Philistines over the hand. I can't imagine the whole time David riding his horse. I wonder if I'm going to win this battle. I wonder, I wonder what's going to happen here. I, w I wonder if my sword's sharp enough. I wonder if, I wonder if my guys are going to stick with me or they're going to run. I, I, wonder, I wonder, 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 wonder. I never wonder. God Almighty spoke directly to him and said, David, go. 
And whether you like it or not, God has spoken directly to us. It's his recorded word. You go to the book of John, the first chapter, where the word became flesh. That's Christ Jesus, and he dwelt among us for a reason, so he could show us the way. And when you struggle in life, the best place to go is just look at the life of Christ. Amen? Look at the right of Christ. How many want a breakthrough? I gave you a pretty good formula. Now, it's not the best. I'm sure you can maybe find better, but I gave you a pretty good breakthrough to, or, or formula as to how to find that breakthrough today. I want us to stand this morning. Listen, I don't know truly what's happening in your heart just like you don't know truly what's happening in my heart. There are things that we can hide from one another, even our husbands, our wives, the closest to us. We can times hide things from them. The one you'll never hide from is God. And I'm telling you this morning, he's not your enemy. He's your source of victory. He is your source of breakthrough. And whatever it is, don't keep your eyes focused on the problem. David focused on the problem, and he went to God with the problem. He said, look at the Philistines, I'm a problem, God. Now, what do I do about it? Do I go up and fight him or not? And he waited until God gave him the word, and then David never hesitated. When God gave him the word, he didn't hesitate. He went and did what God called him to do with full expectations. I guarantee he had no worry hitting out there. What a, what a, what a feeling to have is when you're facing adversity that no could kill you. Could literally wipe you out. But you have a word. Not from pastor. Not from the church or the church leadership. I got a word from the eternal God that created all and everything exists because he says to you. He said to you, go. He said to you, do. And I'm asking you, renew your mind to the fact that his word cannot fail. What he gave you, just respond to it and do it. Guaranteed, it will work. The only time it doesn't work, Peter, is when you get your eyes off of Jesus. Jesus never sunk in the water, only Peter did. Because Jesus was never detached from his father. Jesus was always in tune with God. Him and God were one. And because him and God were one, even the universe had to stand at attention to him. And all we got to do is keep our eyes fixed on the one that gives life. You won't sink in the water. And if you do get your eyes off, remember, he was close enough. This is the key. You've got to be close enough for him to grab you by the hand and take you up. Again, we talked about the log a couple weeks ago. You can't get in if you got all these things in your eyes. But I want to be intimate with him. Come on, church. Breakthrough today. Father God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. God, we open these altars right now. God, if anybody needs to know you as Lord and Savior, let them seek me out. I'll be here at this altar believing for that. But God, if my brothers and sisters need prayer of agreement, God, then I'm here. God, I want to be here. Lord, we'll have prayer warriors here as they come this morning. God, they come to agree with you. They come to agree with the Word of God over their matters in life. They need a breakthrough. They need, they need a burst of energy. They need a, a blowout breakthrough, God. You need them to just blast something in the, in the lines of the enemy to break it forth for them. God, whatever it is, God, I pray, Lord, that they have that breakthrough today. As they would come, Lord, let them expect not me, but expect you at your word. Not, not, me, not at my word, but your word, God. And, Lord, so let it come forth for him, I pray in the name of Jesus. And God, we give you a glory and honor. Bless us this week as we close this service and we dismiss. God, bless each and every heart, Lord. Be as prepared as we can to give an account at any moment to anybody that we come in contact with that Jesus Christ is Lord. Help us, bless us, use us this week in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. These altars are open. If you need help, prayer, if you like prayer, then just come stand at the altar. I'll be right with you. Please be mindful of all the things. Legacy people, all our older folks and people that are up 55 and up, uh, don't forget about Tuesday. 
this Wednesday. Don't forget about our missionary. We'd love to have you in our Wednesday evening service for our missionary. And don't forget about Saturday. We have two events happening. We have the outreach ministry on the streets. That'll be basically 11 to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And then that evening we have game on. So please be a part of that. Looking forward to having you and bless you. God bless you. God love you. Be blessed as you go today. Thank you for listening to our Faith Family Church podcast. We pray you are richly blessed and encouraged by what you heard. If you would like to give to our church and ministries, please visit our website, ffcackworth.com slash give. Thank you so much again for listening.